Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Blazor tutorial. In this video, we're going to be upgrading our project from .NET Core 3.0 to 3.1. It was released, I think, two days ago now, and it has some new features that we want to make use of. So we're going to upgrade. I'll show you how to install and get it all working and switch over your project. And then after that, we'll go through what we've got so far and upgrade and make any changes we need to to make it all work. And yeah, so we're going to get that done now. It shouldn't take too long and I'll see you in the video. But of course, first I've got to thank my patrons, a special thanks to Some Hobo 101, Average Morning, Hades Zorko, Rene, Evgeny, Art Farrell, Buddha Ray, and Remy Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, the link to my patrons down below. If not, it'd be greatly appreciated if you could go and create an account on our website. It's completely free. You get access to all the platform features that we're currently developing. Uh, you can go watch those on our Twitch channel while we're live streaming them every day, Monday to Friday, developing the new features and uh, expanding the platform with you guys as well. So yeah, it'd be greatly appreciated if you could go make an account on our website. There's also the other social media links down below, but at the moment it'd be uh, more appreciated if you made an account on our website. It's like the main thing we're doing right now is we're trying to push, you know, making our website bigger and better for you guys. So the more people are using it, the more feedback we can get and just make it a better website for everyone. So yeah, thanks. So the first thing to do is download .NET Core 3.1. So I'm going to give you this link down below, or you can go find it, it's up to you. And if you go to v3.1.0, make sure you're not on preview, you're on the actual release version. And then over here on the SDK, you can go down, see Windows or whatever operating system you're using, get the right download for you. I'm sure you guys can figure that out. For me, it's Windows 64-bit, download that. You get an EXE, you run that, you go through the installation process, pretty simple. And eventually, once it's done, you need to go to CMD to open a command prompt. Just to make sure it's worked, you can say .NET dash version or should I say sorry .NET dash dash version okay so we're on 3.1.100 now this 100 at the end doesn't really matter as long as you're on 3.1 and it doesn't say preview or anything that's good right you've got the version it's installed okay let's move on to the next part so now we're over in the Visual Studio we want to rename this project to be .web after it because I forgot to do that earlier so all websites should be .web and then after the .web part they should uh, have whatever port they are so if we're for example making just books and an area about books we might want to call it the library project so we can call it dot library or dot books or whatever right but for now we'll just leave it as web i want to go into the properties now i already did this earlier to make sure it worked so but for yours it should be on dotnet core 3.0 you want to change it to dotnet core 3.1 which will appear there if you've got it installed and it's on the right version everything should be fine and then i'm going to also rename the assembly and the namespace to be dot web okay now once you've done this uh, even though this is updated and this is updated, your actual folder won't have updated and you can't edit it while you're in Visual Studio. So if you want to make this stay consistent with everything else, when you close Visual Studio down, just make sure to rename this file .web, okay? I'm going to do that later when I push the changes. So we're going to have some problems now. If we try building, you'll notice we'll have some problems. And that's because we've changed the namespace. So there's a few places we have to fix this and it's not very hard. Just here, .web.shared in this file. And if we build again, if you just keep building, you'll end up finding them all anyway. So the rest of them are in, well, let's just, I know where they are, so I can show you. So if we go to startup, blazetutorial.web, like so. Program, blazetutorial.web. And then, I think that's it. Let's just give it a go again. Because um, all the other classes should know what to do now. Yep, rebuild succeeded if we run. Our project is now uh, project sorry is now running on uh, .NET Core 3.1, and it should still work if we go to slash book slash two, slash one, like so. If we go to slash ten, it doesn't exist. We go back to our homepage, whatever. So there you go. Now that's not the entire video. That's just the installation setup. I'm going to show you now another little bit we're going to do, which is take our two example pages we've built so far and convert them both into using the partial class way that we do things for our website, and it makes stuff a lot easier in the future. I'll explain. Um, the actual benefits as we go along and do it. But yeah, let's just do a cut now towards that. So if we go over to the book page, the first thing we want to do is move this page into a partial class and a component. And then same with the actual component in the page, we want to split it into a partial class and the HTML part. Problem is you guys might notice on yours that this component is red or well, it's blue with red underline telling you there's an error. If you run the project, it's actually completely fine, but obviously you want to get rid of that. It's a bit annoying seeing it and it's hard to get IntelliSense and stuff. So what you need to do to get rid of that error is simply update your Visual Studio. So if you go down, if you search on your computer, Visual Studio installer, and you open that up and you go to your community edition or whichever one you're using and just update it, right? I've already updated it because uh, I had this problem earlier. I was wondering what it, what it was. I Googled it and apparently it's just a version problem. So once you update, I think it asks you to restart your computer. I did because it wouldn't let me otherwise. So restart your PC and then, um, or maybe you don't have to, I don't know, we'll see. And then once you've done that, 
it might still have the error and mine did and i tried to click build i had to rebuild solution and when it rebuilt it with the updated visual studio it's gone away and it's green like it should be okay it's a bit of a fiddle sorry if you have to deal with that i had to deal with it you know we all do i guess but yeah um just warning you on that because it confused me at first but i fixed figured it out i thought i'll let you guys know so now that that's out of the way let's actually turn this into a partial class on a page so all we're going to do is you notice this is called book page dot razor we're going to go to pages we're going to add a new page or a new class sorry and we're going to call it the same thing so it's going to be uh wait, let's mean saying book page dot razor dot cs and you'll notice the actual file we just made is a c-sharp file because it ends in dot cs and what it does is it goes inside essentially this dot razor page so we've got a page and our c-sharp class now what we need to do is we need to make this a public partial class now if you've ever used essentially a partial class is a way to have two files with the same class so you're literally it's just like doing stuff in here but you could split it amongst files now most people are against using them for normal use and there's you know it for a good reason they're just annoying and you know you might not realize codes in one place that's hidden in another so you don't like having uh, code in two places for the same class but the benefit is what for what we're using it for which is having all the co code in here for the partial class and then having the html and the page can like being able to refer to this the main benefit i've noticed there's two main benefits one intellisense the thing that tells you you know variable names and class names and all the stuff you get when you start typing um all these things work in here they do also work in the page but they're like they work less of the time now with blazer updates and stuff like that maybe it'll get better over time maybe it's fine now but when i started using it at least there was definitely a problem so in the partial classes it's much easier to use and much faster as well it's just better in general it's just a normal c sharp class um injects and parameters are easier to deal with just basically all the code writing is just easier in a normal c sharp file so by making it partial and calling it the same thing you can then make this a component base now even though this is for a page you still use component base and this, this allows us to now treat it like the page code so just like earlier on we um if we go back over here we essentially want to just take all the code out of here cut it give it a second because it's being slow apparently and then once you've done that we want to get rid of code completely from here so this is our page now if we go to the razor and paste our code we just have to change some things so injecting the ibook service we just want to you uh, add the using okay so now we can access the book service the navigation manager is all fine the book we also need to have access to down models books so just add down models books i'm going to sort my usings and then this is fine we can override uninitialized because we're using component based we can override it and if we go f7 back here everything's fine we don't even need these usings anymore we just need core web books to have access to the web component okay so now we've got any html and c sharp is in here and we can reference our book variable if you click f12 on the book variable it takes you to the razor c sharp file where it all is here so it's all separated and there you go that's all we really want to do and we want to go around and do that everywhere that we've got this kind of scenario which for us luckily now is only in two places because the component itself yes it has some code and maybe you want to go put that in a separate file that like we can definitely just go right now make another class we can go make the book view component dot razor dot cs now it's up to you if you want to bother doing it for everything you don't have to you can do it where you want um i'd say it's better if you're going to do it in some places and not others the places you wouldn't do it is like this where you just have variables but if you have logic it's definitely better I i'm still going to go ahead and actually just do this so if we put this here into this file we can then go back add it here make this a component base like so it's got parameter it needs book we're going to give it book from dal models the code is now fine it is done we can get rid of the usings that we don't need so here's the code for the page for the component and then back here if you give it a second uh book is a type let me just f12 oh no there we go it's it's caught up now it works okay now technically we don't even need this namespace books because um we can just refer to the variable we don't need any like class types or any reason for a namespace so the pay the component is just this right now okay uh and as i said over here it's like this you can actually i think add namespaces to the components uh so you can do like at namespace uh namespace i don't know if this is necessary but we're going to do it anyway so just like in the other file it's blazer blah, 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 web books we can just do that okay close this that component's now done we don't have to change anything over here where we use the components absolutely fine it's the exact same we already use core web books we pass in the book so the only other page we've actually done anything like this for is for the routing example page which i guess we might as well keep it right so let's go ahead and add a new class for the routing 
example page.razor.cs. Go grab this code. Whoops, I'll have to add that back in myself. Um, and then add it here. Make sure it's a component base. Make sure it's a partial class. Get rid of the usings we're not, we don't need. And then just give it a second, it'll catch up. Everything looks fine to me. We go back here, everything's still fine, it's done. Okay, now let's just build it and make sure it works. I expect it to work. We haven't really changed any logic. We've just changed how the pages are structured. And that's how we're gonna do it from now on. So whenever we add a new page or a component, we'll make a thing for the HTML and a thing for the C sharp code to split it. And it just makes it a lot easier to deal with and organize. So yeah, I hope you obviously enjoyed that. Um, it's a very short video, just showing you how to set stuff up and get it moved over. But that means that next week when we do the next video, we can actually start making a database. That's the one thing people want. Next video is about making a database and making these books read from the database. And once we can actually uh, read to the database, we're gonna make a CRUD model. And a CRUD is essentially um, a way to create, update, no, sorry, create, read, update, and delete, right? CRUD. So we want to be able to make a page to create books to add to the database, update books to update in the database, delete books to remove from the database, and then read to, well, just get from the database and display them, right? So we're gonna make different components for viewing and editing, and then we're gonna make the different pages and a button to create a new one. And when you've done, you can press like create or save or whatever. You can update it, you can go back to the page and so on. Make the entire flow here so you can actually store stuff in a database and re load it up in a page to edit. So yeah, I hope you're looking forward to that. That's gonna be coming next week. We'll start making that. It'll probably take us two or three videos to get the entire thing done. Um, because I will actually be using a proper service. We'll be setting up a database connection and all that. So yeah, I hope you look forward to it. Let me know down below what you want to see. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Go create an account on our website. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time and goodbye.